dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Olivia Calfi. Memorial Day is a day dedicated to remembering those who have fought and died for our country. As Samantha Valentino shows us, hundreds of people traveled to Central Kentucky today to honor the veterans buried at Camp Nelson. Camp Nelson National Cemetery is the final resting place for more than 17,000 brave men and women. The orderly aligned white headstones surrounding us here today remind us that freedom is not free. Where to a land that's free. This Memorial Day, hundreds traveled from near and far to visit ancestors, family, and friends who are laid to rest here at Camp Nelson. It feels really good to know that like, part, people in my family have served to like, save people. Ron Baker brings his daughter Sadie here every year to remind her they have many family members who have made the ultimate sacrifice. We wanted to put flags on the gravestones of the people that we loved. For Vietnam veteran Robert Webb, he's here to honor those he served alongside overseas who never made it home. I lost a lot of friends in Vietnam, and today I give honor. I still think about them. I made it back, and they did not, and I can never forget that. Through Colin Powell said, the nation is what it is today because of the efforts and sacrifices of its veterans. As people crowded around the stage to watch Monday's ceremony, Carolyn Green chose to watch from afar to spend time with her friend and World War II veteran, Jesse Ford Trumbo. Because I can talk to him and I think I'm sharing the ceremony with him, I think it's very important that uh, on Memorial Day, as we should every other day, that we honor those who have served. In Jessamine County, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. Hundreds of volunteers helped place flags at each headstone at Camp Nelson ahead of today's ceremony. Now they're asking for help to those remove those flags this Wednesday at 5 p.m. Food will be provided. State lawmakers gathered today to remember fallen veterans. A Memorial Day service took place this morning at Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville. Both Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and Representative Morgan McGarvey highlighted the bravery and sacrifice our veterans have made. I have great confidence that every generation of Americans will stand up to the challenge and be able to meet the challenge and to organize the rest of the world to protect democracy and freedom, which is why we're here today. Thank you all for being here today for standing here today, for remembering those who gave everything for our freedoms. The ceremony featured a 21-gun salute, a wreath laying, and the playing of taps. The holiday season is upon us, and that means more people are hitting the roads across the region. With the recent storms impacting eastern Kentucky, it is important for people to remember some tips so they can keep themselves and others around them safe. We spoke to the Hazard Fire Department to see what people should know before they travel. Oh, with live power lines, it's extremely important when you see live power line, any power line, whether it's telecommunication or uh, power. If you see those laying on the roadway, don't try to draw, drive over them. Don't try to pick them up and move them. Contact 911 dispatch or if you can, contact the uh, the service company, AEP, and, and let them know that their lines are down. Best practice, though, is to just dial 911. Officials also warn people to never drive through standing water as your vehicles can stall and be taken away with the current. Well, some good news. The weather is much more calm to go into this Monday night. So watching out, though, for a few showers to go into the overnight hours. Upon first alert, pinpoint Doppler, no severe weather issues. But again, we are tracking some light showers over far southern Kentucky from Whitley County, pushing into Knox County, close to Barberville, also close to Pineville and Middlesboro, over in Bell County, pushing into parts of Leslie County and into Harlan County at this hour. Tracking a few showers in downtown Harlan right now as well. Those temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s. 
70s, so we're still mild as we're past the 11 o'clock hour up to 70 here in Jackson, 69 for Pikeville and 68 for Hazard, also down to 66 for Harlan, also Middlesboro at this hour. Most of us wake up in the upper 50s to lower 60s, possibly a few middle 50s in those cooler pockets to wake up and walk out the door. Also tracking the potential for some dense fog in some areas by Tuesday morning and the big story for most of this week, some more sunshine on the way. Also tracking some below average weather. We see highs back in the low 70s for midweek and lows possibly in the 40s by Wednesday night, also by Thursday night. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Olivia. All right, Cameron, thank you. Folks in Leslie County are no different than many people working to clean up debris after the weekend storms. On Owl's Nest Road, the damage may look bad, but there were no lives lost. Neighbors were helping neighbors as the high winds left down trees and power lines both on and around homes. Magistrate John Newell says he hopes to be able to get people some help soon. It, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. A lot of these people I've known for many years and good friends. And what I'm doing here today is not part of it. Yes, it's my job as a magistrate, but I want to be here as, as a friend. Newell says the governor's declaration of a state of emergency will help get him to get funding to families in need. And earlier today, officials with the National Weather Service in Jackson County made the trip to the Cumberland Valley to look at the damages left by Sunday's severe weather. The storm survey is a way for Weather Service personnel to get a better understanding of the storm and to see how their warnings played out. Whitley County Emergency Management Director Jerry Rain says the damages they've seen left from the severe weather is similar to the damages left from the storms back in April. From what I've seen today, this seems to be following along the same path of the April 2nd storm, uh, which is kind of unusual for this part of Kentucky. We normally don't see storms that come back to back along the same area, but we're seeing a lot of damage in the same areas that was in April. Whitley County residents impacted by the severe weather are encouraged to reach out to the judge's office in order for their damages to be surveyed. And also after yesterday's severe weather, many communities are having to rebuild after those storms created a path of destruction. As you all know, several different parts of Kentucky suffered severe damage. As communities are beginning the process of rebuilding, we are seeing some of the damage left behind. John Pierce says he was doing the same thing he does every Sunday when dangerous storms hit his home in Grayson County. I was getting ready to walk into church and my, one of my neighbors called and told me, John, you need to get home. He said, I think your house is gone. No tornado in Grayson County, but the National Weather Service says it's just as serious. The National Weather Service did confirm a tornado in Meade County, just shy of the Hardin County line. And a Lake Cumberland Marina was heavily damaged by the severe weather. Boats, a dock, and the campground at Conley Bottom Marina in Wayne County were damaged from the early morning severe weather. No one was injured from the damage. This marina has experienced a lot in the past five years. There was a flood at the campground. There's been wind damage at the marina, and nearly five years ago, right before Memorial Day weekend, there was a devastating fire there. It took several years to recover from the fire with a new ship store and restaurant built. Part of the new additions were damaged again last night in the storm. We have experienced a lot. Um, it gets to a point sometimes where you wonder how much more you can take. Um, but we know that God has a plan and we'll just be here every day working as hard as we can work and getting everything put back together and take it day by day. Along with the damage at the marina, there was also major damage at a nearby boat storage facility. And trees ripped from the ground, houses torn from their foundation, scenes of devastation linger in Hopkins County. For many, this isn't their first encounter with severe weather. The tornado that struck in December 2021 in Dawson Springs caused widespread damage to their community. In the years since, they have been recovering until another disaster hit Sunday night. Thousands remain without power and are uncertain of when it will be restored. It's just, this is my childhood home and I felt like I feel like the tornado was so evil. To think that it will happen to you, you just, you don't. And when it does, you just, 
just have to sit and wonder and think, where do you go from here? The mayor of Dawson Springs encourages her community to conserve as much water as possible. And coming up on Mountain News at 11, at least 45 people are dead, hundreds more wounded at a tent camp in Rafa. Plus, we are tracking a late May cool down. Your first alert forecast after this break.